November 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 13 from the New Testament. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, and on its horns were ten diadem crowns, and on its heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast that I saw was like a leopard, but its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. The dragon gave the beast his power, his throne, and great authority to rule. One of the beast's heads appeared to have been killed, but the lethal wound had been healed, and the whole world followed the beast in amazement. They worshipped the dragon because he had given ruling authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast too, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to make war against him? The beast was given a mouth speaking proud words and blasphemies, and he was permitted to exercise ruling authority for 42 months. So the beast opened his mouth to blaspheme against God, to blaspheme both his name and his dwelling place, that is, those who dwell in heaven. The beast was permitted to go to war against the saints and conquer them. He was given ruling authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation, and all those who live on the earth will worship the beast, everyone whose name has not been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life belonging to the Lamb who was killed. If anyone has an ear, he had better listen. If anyone is meant for captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed by the sword, then by the sword he must be killed. This requires steadfast endurance and faith from the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up from the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but was speaking like a dragon. He exercised all the ruling authority of the first beast on his behalf, and made the earth and those who inhabit it worship the first beast, the one whose lethal wound had been healed. He performed momentous signs, even making fire come down from heaven in front of people, and by the signs he was permitted to perform on behalf of the beast, he deceived those who live on the earth. He told those who live on the earth to make an image to the beast who had been wounded by the sword, but still lived. The second beast was empowered to give life to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and could cause all those who did not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He also caused everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to obtain a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Thus no one was allowed to buy or sell things unless he bore the mark of the beast, that is, his name or his number. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has insight calculate the beast's number, for it is a man's number, and his number is 666. God, I don't like reading these parts, <laughs> just being honest. The one part that is consoling to me, I guess two parts. One, you are permitting this behavior on behalf of Satan. He's completely under your control. He is not allowed to do anything unless you allow him to do it. So I think we need to read, especially some of these harder chapters with that in mind, that, that you are allowing him to do that. And then, of course, the second piece of that, your sovereignty, which gives you the right to allow him to do that, uh, reigns supreme. And in the end, all of this very powerful, very scary stuff that we're reading about, all of that will be overtaken by you. So I think we need to keep that in mind when reading these, because it really does start to bother me recording some of this and how much power satan already has in people's lives and, and how much he will continue to gain as we get closer and closer to end of times i find this particular chapter fascinating once i can get past the agitation part of it for for a couple of reasons one i love the part where it talks about those who've been written about in the book of life Predestination and elect are topics that theologians love to debate about. And I'm not going to debate about it right now, but I believe in predestination. I believe that in the elect because I believe in that book uh, that you have. And it's probably not a real book, uh, but the lives and the names of everyone who completely by grace alone have been chosen before creation 
to be redeemed by your son's death. Um, that incredible book are the people who are going to come under persecution, but they're also going to be ultimately saved from all of this horrid stuff that we're reading about. Um, all of the being thrown into the fire and worshiping of the devil, uh, that we will be exempt from that. And that again provides me comfort that it is by your sovereign grace alone that our names as saved children of yours are written in that book and that we have been redeemed by your son, Jesus Christ's death. The second part about this is a lot of people, depending upon their view of end of times, believe that this particular chapter especially happens pretty much constantly throughout history. And I would say I, I pretty much believe that too because you can see that happening. Uh, when Satan, who's a dragon, is allowing the beast, who a lot of people think is ultimately the Antichrist, uh, to cause destruction. Um, then there's a second beast that comes along um, who enforces the worship of the first beast. And a lot of people believe that first beast will be a political leader who will gain power in this world. And we've seen before political leaders who definitely don't worship you, God, uh, who obviously uh, are being puppets by Satan, um, political leaders who are set out to do bad in this world. And then a, a lot of people, and I would say I'm one of them, believe that that second beast is going to be a religious counterpart who promotes that first beast, who promotes and enforces the worship of that first beast. And we see this already too. We see political leaders that are pure evil like um, Hitler come into power. And we also see religious people people who are leaders in different communities support those political powers um, we're seeing it today as well and people wonder why i'm so adamant about being careful of who you listen to and who you follow and it's because of this exact piece that there's going to come a time where who you've chosen to listen to and learn from here on earth your religious leaders they are completely one or two sides. They're either yours, God, or they're being controlled by Satan. And one of these religious leaders is going to have enough power to be able to enforce this worship of this first beast of a political leadership. Now, if you just stop and think for a second what's going on in our current world, we see this happening. Now, me personally, God, and you know this is just me. This isn't anything I'm basing anything on any sort of fact. Um, but I believe since you are the only one who knows when the end of times will happen. That Satan doesn't even know. I believe he has to raise up these type of people in every single generation. And be ready to go in case of end of times. In case that happens. And so I think that this is why from a historical standpoint we've seen this happen continuously pretty much since the, the first day <laughs> we've seen uh, this political power happen and we've seen this religious power happen and not for not for your sake and probably the third part that I really find fascinating about this particular chapter is the number the 666 number and there's so many conversations about the 666 number and you know we, it shows up in our culture all the time and things like that and numbers don't have power. They only have power unless you give them power, God. Um, and this particular number, uh, if you study uh, numerology according to the Bible, uh, there are certain numbers that meant certain things to the Jewish people and s other numbers that weren't good according to the Jewish people. So I find it fascinating that the number seven to them was divine completeness that was a perfect number to them divine completeness and here the the number that's being given to the beast uh, the antichrist is 666 so deficient <laughs> there's no completeness there's no uh, fulfillment that before it can fulfill what it has come to do it is stopped and, and actually destroyed by you, God. There's, there's nothing that allows it to be completed. 
I also find it fascinating because those who have been written in your book of life and given that opportunity completely by your grace, by nothing that they have done, but completely by your grace, then ultimately we will have the opportunity to be sevens. But how incredibly scary that, but then I see these other people who are going to miss this opportunity to be in your book. Uh, and I kind of, cause I'm a numbers person, I'm a math person. They're going to miss it by that one number between six and seven. And I was talking to some people on Facebook the other day about how you can't be almost saved and you can't be almost Christian. And I, th I think a lot of the people who are the sixes truly believe that they can go to church on Sunday and they're good to go. They can be good people and they're going to make it to heaven. That completeness is never going to happen. They're always going to fall short. Now we fall short of the glory of God and, and you amazingly, simply by your grace, you come in and you say, you are mine and I am your savior. But I struggle so much, just like Daniel. And it's interesting because so many, much of Revelation, especially the beast that we're talking about, Daniel talks about. You know, when Daniel was given these prophecies, his heart was broken for the people that up and coming these situations were going to happen to. And my heart breaks for the sixes of this world. Um, I am not a perfect seven. I simply know in, my, in your book of life, I get to have that mark on me. But for all the people who are sixes and are searching and looking, if they are meant to be sevens in your book, if they are meant to eventually have your mark on them, God, allow the people who need to come into their life to come into their life and speak truth. Don't allow us to be fearful of this world. Holy cow, we have things that are way bigger to be fearful of. If you understand the power of what is actually happening in this world right now, God, allow us to come into their lives. Allow us to speak truths. Allow us to walk alongside them. Allow us to love them and have relationships with them. Very similar to the relationships that your son had with his disciples. God, I, I thank you for being so incredibly transparent about what is currently happening and what is going to happen. I think a lot of times people just like me get really agitated about this part of the world and we don't want to think about it and we don't want to dwell on it and we should dwell on the good things of this earth but we do need to realize that there is a battle waging constantly an unseen battle waging constantly uh, one that we sometimes get glimpses of of what is currently happening and what is to come and I think as Christians especially we need to be aware of this battle and to be able to have that discernment from you to understand what is you, your son, your word, who are the people that can teach us the word, and then who are the people who are deceivers. God, thank you for going alongside of us and providing that discernment for us. Allow us to hear your word. Allow us to hear your answer so incredibly clear so that we make the right choices according to your will. In your son's name I pray, amen.